everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women, healing through storytelling. Hi guys. Thank you guys for tuning back into Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I so, so, so appreciate your viewership and listenership. Thank you for tuning in every week on Wednesdays for the VOC podcast hosted by yours truly, Mame Ajay. Um, If you haven't taken a look at the past episodes, we had Eugenia Washington, we had Sharina Gutierrez, and I had my open letter to the fashion industry Definitely take a look on YouTube, watch the videos, and obviously listen to it on all streaming platforms that you listen to your podcast um, for the past episodes. Make sure you're subscribed and up to date on the next episodes. Today, I have with me here my girlfriend, my dear, dear friend. We actually met working, yeah? Yes. Uh, Brianna Michelle. Yes. Hi, you guys. <laughs> Hi, Brianna. Thanks for having me, my man. I'm so happy for you and excited of, you know, about this whole podcast that you have got going on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's, it's, um, I still get nervous. Like, I'm still, <laughs> you know, guys, I really appreciate you guys, um, listening and stuff because, like, we're, we're, we're new to this. We're growing in this. But um, you have to start from somewhere. Absolutely. And we're getting better and better. I'm like, we're getting better and better. So it's all good. They say Beyonce still get nervous when she goes on stage. She says she still get nervous. So listen, you have a right to be nervous. Yes. And that's that. That's all that matters. That's it. Amen. So I just (laughs) want to get started and say, um, let I I like to always, you know, if if I know my guests, like I want to introduce you. Like, how did we meet? Uh, We met. So it wasn't, it was before Amsterdam. Yes, yes. Yes. We met on set of a Walmart commercial, guys. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. That's so crazy. I yeah. forgot. Because I had seen you on Instagram like many times before Ditto. and maybe like liked your photos and stuff. But like, I was like, oh, she's a cool girl. She seems cool. Cool, yeah. And then we got on set and I'm like, oh, you definitely are cool. Yeah, like, yeah. you're one of those people that you are who you present yourself to be oh, th- like, and I really like, you can see that mm-hmm. you can really see that. I, I feel like you can really tell when someone's being themselves so, online. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, authentic. Yeah. Usually. I mean, you're the same too. You're so very it's, authentic. Cause it's interesting being on set sometimes with people yeah. and how it's, it could be this weird competition or no one's really talking to each other. And, and that wasn't our vibe. That at wasn't all. the vibe at all. Like yeah. we were on that set and it was a, um, was it, it was like a black, it was it was black dinner. You know, it was, <laughs> I was gonna say urban. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was the urban Walmart commercial. It was very urban. Everybody was brown. Okay. Oh, I hate that word. But I love word. to see it though. I hate that word to describe blackness. Like, no, urban just means city white or whatever. Like, yeah. it does not mean black. Black at all. But, okay. It does not identify blackness. Right, but okay. At all. Yeah. Yes, it was a very black centered commercial. It was amazing. Yes. And I met you on there, and you were gorgeous and i remember we were like we have to link up oh my god and we actually did and here we are uh like two or three years later friends then we went to amsterdam job in amsterdam together that was so fun that was so much fun that was hella fun we were smoking hella weed (laughs) i got paranoid a few times but (laughs) but then i was trying to keep us like i was trying to keep us you know it's okay (laughs) you know we got on a bike y'all we got on bikes like you know amsterdam Amsterdam. weed is legal before it was legal here like yeah this is this is they're like going to a a coffee shop yeah exactly because that they have coffee shop with weed literally yeah and just grabbing a cookie (laughs) so we got our tea we got our weed we were smoking in this nice little it was so So beautiful it's so peaceful (laughs) i I remember videos of that yes i remember we had our cookies and all this stuff and then we got on the bikes explore the whole whole city yeah we did the bikes every day it was so fun it It was was so so much fun fun. but trying to navigate when you're high is the worst oh my god we're (laughs) never gonna get home where are we going 
<laughs> you know what was another funny time we were in Amsterdam when we went to that um, sex Oh my <laughs> the God. Last sex show. Y'all, we went to the red light district. That. Oh my God. It was a hot, hot ass, ass mess. mess. Okay. It was hilarious. It, it, it was hilarious and a hot mess I all think at the same time. The last one that we went to was the most traumatizing because it was like, what the fuck is happening? Going. And remember the it was weird. Yeah, it was I did not like it. Yeah, it was a live sex show, first of all. I don't it know was, why we, we were high, so we were just like, I mean, we, it was it, we, Amsterdam. We, let's do what the Amsterdam yeah. people do. <laughs> but it was wild because like the girls did they look like they have been they've been on the milk cartons and they were like probably young, they were drugged, they were it was so much and it made me feel uncomfortable just It was because, disturbing. Yeah. But cause at first I was just like, is she I mean she 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 must do this. This is like her my nine to five McDonald's job, yeah. like mm. clock in, clock out. So she's like getting it from the back, and she's like, No, she was like this, just, just no just reaction. Yeah. Just, uh, mm. it was it sad, was low key, awkward. And then it got sad, and then we're like, Okay, Good time to go. <laughs> Let's get out of here. But yeah, I forget. Like you don't know the yeah, you don't know the story behind a lot of these people that are there. on stage, yeah. and this that's the scary part yeah. about like. And sex then, workers because i i love the liberation of like i um like right now there's such a push and the shift happening mm -hmm. on all fronts Fine. and i see like i have friends that are followed that are super like liberated that are like you know we have to give rights to sex workers which we do Dude, because yeah. if you choose for this to be your profession who is someone power to, to say, you yeah and you should be able to make money and you should be able to to have um, freedoms and rights and protections. Yeah, yeah protections. Protections, That's number one. Important. Feel me? And, you know, if you're someone that is doing sex work, just because you're in a situation where you don't feel safe and you're saying, no, I don't want this, and someone still proceeds to go on, uh, it's, it's no, right. it's right. <laughs> and just because right. you have said yes before does not I mean. mean yeah. That's so, it. yeah, People I totally agree. Twisted when it comes to. Um, That's the whole know, thing. Yeah. And sexual assault. It's like you can say yes once. You can say yes twice. But as soon as you say no, no, no means no. It means yeah. no. Yeah. And consent is sexy. Period. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like if, you know, somebody wants to give you themselves, it's sexier. Versus Wouldn't you rather? Your, yes. I mean. You would think, but you rape think. is a whole totally different ball game. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a whole thing. So the, with the sex workers, for sure, like that's the whole thing. But back to us. <laughs> um, I just wanted to get into your story. Like, where are you from? You are just. Um, I always say this, and I I use you often as an example of just like true victory over circumstance, like. <laughs> to have gone through so much in your life, just a multitude of things, and just be such a breath of fresh air when you walk into a room, to be such a light, to be so beautiful, like, and it's authentic, it's genuine, it's beautiful. Like, I'm just like, thank God we don't look like what we've been through. Oh my God. You know, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that a lot of us don't look like what we've been through because, child. You, and you wouldn't know if you didn't ask the questions. You wouldn't know if you didn't get to know people. And that's the point of all of this. What is the story behind this beautiful person that we see, we know, and we love? You know? And so, like, where are you from? I'm raised in Seattle, Washington. Yes. I'm raised by a single parent. Yeah. Um, my dad had his issues with drugs. And, um, you know, the, and I always say that in a sense of, understanding that he was sick you know um my mom really made it very clear that he loved me but he was ill um but she always gave me the freedom to see him and love him oh I love despite that. right his, his sickness. troubles yeah yeah. And yeah despite who he was and even if they didn't have a good relationship she really put her she was very selfless in that sense um so I got to know him here For and there yourself. yeah exactly not through her relationship with him but through my relationship with Amen. them. Um, and that's another thing too. You know, I think that's parents. really important for parents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really important just because your relationship didn't exactly. work out. Exactly. It doesn't identify the relationship with the child and their mother or father. You know, um, let that let child Let them have love their relationship. A hundred percent. And um, I always thank my mom for that too. Yeah, it's very there. selfish when parents want to like- Cut the child off from having a relationship yeah. with someone that maybe, yeah, you, you were hurt by this man, but- 
You're a partner yeah, to that person. Exactly. That has nothing to do with that with, child. Exactly. And you guys actually liked each other real for a moment. Right. That's, <laughs> so I've had cut me, it out. You know that? <laughs> Let's not play those games. That's that's yeah, true. Yeah. Um, you know, so I grew up, you know, with me and my mom, and then my aunt moved to Seattle, and then my cousins moved there too. Um, so I have two moms, pretty much. Lovely. <laughs> my bonus mom, which is my auntie. Um, yeah, and I grew up, you know, just... Seattle, and Washington, great, and, and you know, and it's seemingly a great situation. You know, I've never uh, really, I don't really know about um, Seattle. Like, what is Seattle like? Even? It's very liberal, it looks, really. Yeah, okay, it looks liberal. rainy. It's rainy. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely rainy. I feel like the only thing I know is uh, Fifty Shades Grey. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's very rainy. It's cloudy um, a lot, but it's evergreen state so it's like a rainforest so it's all just very green Beautiful. yes I need to the, go visit. the Puget Sound you have to anytime you want to go there? uh it snows it doesn't really stick okay okay um but we just came from Mount Rainier um and it was full of snow is that in Seattle mm-hmm. it's like about an hour and 45 minutes okay because I want to go yes. I just want to go somewhere to see some snow guys yes and Big Bear too does there snow there yet mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's there now yeah Don't no maybe line. not it might be still <laughs> still too warm yeah. Um, okay, beautiful. Yeah, I grew up in Seattle and went to college in Atlanta. Okay, so, um, w- yeah, I was going to say, like, what brought you finally to L.A.? And obviously we have to go through. Yeah. Y- you went to college. Yeah, I went to college. Atlanta. Um, I decided, that, you know, out of my grandparents, um, I was the only grandchild to go to college. And then I had my wow. cousins who looked up to me, you know, so I really wanted to um, show them that they can do more with their lives. So I really wanted to go to, and I wanted to get away from Seattle. I, and I, I wanted to that. get away from my mom. Too, what made you bit. decide to go to Clark Atlanta? Was it Clark Atlanta? Yeah, because it was HBCU. You know, I felt like in Seattle, it wasn't enough of us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that we didn't really learn much about our culture. So to be around us, to me, was exciting. Um, so I got accepted to Tuskegee. I got accepted to Clark Atlanta. I got accepted to Spelman. But my best friend went to Spelman. No, I didn't get accepted to Spelman. I didn't apply for Spelman. My mm. best friend went to Spelman. Mm. So you guys were next door to each other. Yeah. So it's like, perfect. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, I'll just go to Clark Atlanta. You what know? were you going to study? What did you want to become at the um, time? Initially, I went as an engineer because oh, I've yeah. always been very good at math. And um, that was really boring. Really? <laughs> and I did not like the math part. It okay. was not exciting for right. me. And I changed my major a million times. Um, and then I ended up having a dream of my grandmother um, saying, my grandfather telling me that I should do something in the public. And so the next day I just changed my major to public relations. Wow. Yeah. So. No way. A dream. Yeah. So they dream. came to you in your dream. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And I was like, the last time I think I dreamt of my grandfather. Really? Honestly. Yeah. So and so that's what kind of made you change your, what's yeah. it called? Your major and focus on that. Yeah, because I was was I was uh, engineering, then civil engineering, then inter- business, then international business. I studied oh, abroad in Spain. Oh man! Then I realized I'm like I don't really even learn Spanish when I was there. <laughs> Speaking way too much English. Um, I love the paella though. Yeah, yeah. Hola, como esta? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the paella was good and the <laughs> dancing and the wine. Um, but you know, you start meeting people who speak English, and my house mother Carmina spoke English. She would never speak Spanish, Spanish to us. See? Yeah, so she'd be like, gay, you know. Um, She's like, <laughs> she used to say that all the time, gay. It's the only thing she used to say. Um, yeah, and in college, I, you know, my freshman year just figuring it out and kind of going to Atlanta was a culture shock Sorry. yeah because it's like oh my god I've never seen this many black people. I've never been to well I've been to Atlanta but not not long enough to really like get to into get it into Atlanta. I, I watch Real Housewives of uh, Atlanta y'all and Girl, I'm just that like is not I'm obsessed <laughs> I know I know this is terrible I'm obsessed I really want to go and spend some time so how was it um, Atlanta was great, you know, like my first year kind of tapping into it was definitely a culture shock, yeah. but I fell right yeah, into the culture. Yeah. Oh my God. I fell right into the culture because I love us yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was different because I'm from Seattle and there's like 13% of us there and all kind of, you know, spread out in a sense. Um, you know, I made my really good friends my freshman year there to, um, form your tribe. Yeah, I did. I formed a dope little tribe from my Bumstead crew. Um, it, was a, it was our dorm. That was our dorm. It was called Bumstead. I'm done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, Bumstead. Bumstead. Yeah, we lived in Bumstead. Uh, Bumstead Divas. It was, yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I formed my little tribe. And um, yeah, my sophomore year, though, I was wild because I was trying to move into a different apartment and not stay on campus and yada, yada, Y'all yada. Were. I know. One of my best friends transferred to Georgia State. And so... 
Um, I hadn't seen her for a really long time when she transferred to Georgia State. And uh, my April 1st, she had called me. Um, it was April Fool's Day. Well, no, it was the night before April Fool's Day. Um, and she wanted me to go out. And I remember I was like, oh, my God, I just dyed my hair. I streaked my hair. So my hair was blonde, and I tried oh. to dye it black. It was oh. like... That's and it turned green, green, girl. I was about to say, oh. well, I was so mad this night because I had, yeah. had this whole part blonde right here, and it was literally green. Um, and she called me. She was like, let's go out. I haven't seen you in a while. You know, like, yeah, whatever. And I was like, nope, not doing it. And, you know, whatever. Fast forward, I end up I look up. crazy. Yeah, I do. I look crazy as hell, okay? We end up going out. Yeah, yeah. I end yes. up going out, putting on my Tims, my jeans, my hoodie. Yeah, I left the little green streak because I was like, I guess if I'm going to, let me wear it. <laughs> Here we are. Ahead of your time. Yes, ahead of my time. And um, when I got there, um, everybody's having fun, vibing, uh, ready to go. And me and this guy named Jason was like, oh, let's go eat, you know, across the street at Cheesecake Factory. And I was going to go to move my car to eat and ran into a little fender bender. You know, you parallel park your car, you kind of bump into the car mm-hmm, behind mm-hmm. you. Um, but you don't really think... It's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> At all. <laughs> yeah, I know. A little doop. Um, you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, Let me just, you know. Um, but obviously, when I got out of the car, the guy that was in the car was mm-hmm. like, you know, bitch, you just had my car, yada, yada, yada. And well, I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, I have insurance. I'm sorry. Nothing right. was wrong right. with this car. Right. Um, and we're going back and forth, but I was a lot um, more vulnerable, mm-hmm. a lot more. Uh, You're yelling. Yeah, yeah, a lot more, uh, what can I say, too? Like, a bit more soft-spoken, okay. in a sense, okay. you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. and I, so I was nervous. Of course. And fast forward, you know, he's talking to me kind of in my face, right. and, you know, not me not knowing what to do. I'm like, I have insurance, right, you know? Right, like, trying whatever. to like, calm, like, the calm the situation down. down. Yeah. And eventually a guy came across the street, and he was like, yeah, you know, um, dude, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Another person came Another across person. the street? Another person, okay. Yeah. Um, dude, what's going on? You know, whatever. And I'm, yeah, and I'm telling him, you know, what's happening. And I'm like, I have insurance. You know, I can do whatever. You know, I got right. 24 hours to report, whatever. And so he ended up calming the guy down. We ended up writing these letters. And was anything even wrong with the car? Girl, nothing no. was wrong with the car. Like, you I literally, made- when I say tapped it, like, it was a little bump, you know? And that's where I feel like some people just be uh, also like they they yeah. purposely Anything bump into you, mm-hmm. so and make it seem like it was your fault. Yeah, you know, <laughs> once the story once the story panned out, there mm-hmm. were questions of mm-hmm. how that whole situation happened. Okay. Um, and so the guy that was helping me was like, you know, you probably shouldn't leave your car here because we calmed the dude down. We wrote a letter. We was like, okay, we'll contact each other tomorrow to you know if anything's so wrong with your car, we can deal with it with insurance. Right. Um, it was too late. He was drunk. He didn't really want the police to be right, called. So, right. mm. you know, um, he was like, well, you probably should, you know, leave your car here. You should probably park. There's a parking lot, you know, right around the corner because, you know, he might still be drunk. You come right. into your car by yourself, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's right. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. So he showed me where I can park my car. Um, and I'm putting on my lip gloss to get out of the car. And before I can even get up, he just started choking me. No. Yeah. Um, and this was the so-called Good Samaritan that had come that to help you me. out. Yeah. Yeah, so just, you know, it's just being very cautious and listening to yourself because it was interesting when he was helping me and I'm looking at him as he had his hat tilt down really low. His eyes were a little bit red and I was like, oh, he looks a little crazy. That's mm-hmm. my initial thought. Right. But I was like, he's helping me. Right, he's helping me. So it's me. very important, ladies, when you feel something innately, it's really important to listen to your intuition because yes. it will never uh, steer you wrong. You know, it really won't. Um, it really won't. And that's just, you know, any fear, any uncomfortability, anything. Um, yeah, he strangled me until I was unconscious. And uh, when I woke up, he was driving my car. I was butt naked. And he was smoking a cigarette, music blasting. In the car. You woke in up the, in the car. In the car. After yeah. having passed out. Yeah, or being strangled until I was unconscious. Yeah. And the whole time he was strangling me, he was like, you're going to die tonight. Bitch. <gasps> you're gonna die tonight bitch. So you remember that. Oh, yeah. Do I remember? Oh, my God. Yeah, that was the most... Um, you know, seeing life flash before yeah. your eyes. Like, you know, when he was strangling me the whole time, he was just like, you're going to die tonight, bitch. No. And the whole time when he's doing it, I remember to myself, like, oh, my God, my mom couldn't handle this. Oh. Like, you know, I just yeah, knew you're I was thinking, gonna... Look at you, thinking about your mother mom, in that time. Yeah, I know. It was yeah. very ironic. Well, when yeah. I started peeing on myself, um, I didn't even realize I defecated on myself until after. after. Um, you, your body was in shock. Yeah, in shock and, you know... 
uh, damn near dying, you know? Yeah, like, he strangled you, me until... You almost it, died. Yeah. Um, but thank God I didn't. I'm still I'm here, girl. Uh, thank God. And that is just... I can't even wrap my head around. Like yeah, It's the most... Um, it's very terrifying. Right. It's like unreal sometimes right. even to even think about it. Sometimes right. when I was talking, I was like, damn, right. like, that really happened. That really happened. That really happened. And, you know, you got to get through, push through, right? What can you do? Yeah. You know, it's like you have to just keep going. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to keep going. Um, you know, he kept me for a few hours. He raped me a few times throughout the period. Um, the first This was all in that one night. Yeah, all in that one night in my car. <laughs> Um, and then fast forward, um, he ended up, I remember we were driving cause my seat was all the way back. My pass, my passenger seat. Um, and he had put some clothes on me that I had in my trunk. Cause you know how we always be like, stuff. right. Yeah. Stuff in my trunk. Cause right. I was naked. Right. And so the day was coming. Right. Um, and all I remember is him driving into this, all I seen was these apartments and like, we were like driving on this. So graph. you're like kind of, uh, your consciousness is coming I'm, back? Or? Yeah, my consciousness is coming back, but I still couldn't move. Okay. Like, my, it was like, I couldn't... You're, like, paralyzed. Almost. Yeah, it was a weird... Trip. Was it fear that paralyzed you, or was it, it just, like, shock, or it, was it... You weren't, yeah. He didn't drug you, did he? Not that I know of. Okay. I mean, I did have, like, an orange juice in my car, but, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, you, I really yeah, don't know. I don't know. think so, though, because they did all the drug tests. Yeah. All, yeah, I don't think he did. But you just were... Yeah, I I don't what know if it happening. was fear. I don't know if it was shock. I don't it know if it's my body yeah. just na- naturally not moving. I mean, because you know, naturally no. you would think like, yeah. oh man, like open the door, jump out the car. No, like, when, when I watch movies, that's what that's I, what you're thinking. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't fight him, do yeah. this. But you don't know what it's like to have when a you're, man mm. strangling you, like literally yeah. with all his force, and all you're thinking about is breathing. Oh my god. Yeah, it was, ugh, girl, it was terrifying. But um, he was driving through. This little door in his apartment. Yeah. And I remember seeing him and I'm like, oh my God, what's about to happen next? And he literally like unclenched my teeth because my teeth were clenched together when you get asphyxiated. Um, your teeth clench and your face swells wow. and all this stuff. And he unclenched my teeth and he had poured some beer down my throat. And he was like, get the fuck up. Like, wait the fuck up. Like, why the fuck you have to let the nigga do that to you? He's acting like it's, like, literally someone else. Wait. Like, girl. And, like, I couldn't, like, I... This could... person is deranged. Yeah, literally. Like, and it was crazy because I remember every single fucking pour in your face because you were on top of yeah. me trying to kill me. Like, yeah. I remember everything about you. Oh and I remember him putting the mirror down. He was like, look at yourself. Like, look at yourself. And when I see myself, mommy, my face was probably... It was swollen. No My way. eyes were like bulgy. They yeah. were bloodshot red. Um, and I just remember saying to myself, Brianna, do not start crying. Wow. Because I felt every bit of... Of course. I'm like, wow, this actually happened. Like, and I couldn't believe you could tell yourself not to cry in that moment. I don't even know where that came from. That's, that was God. God. <laughs> that That's was, God. Yeah, 100%. And I was like, do not start crying. And whatever he does, like just make him feel good, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. make get him feel out of the situation to get out, yes. you know. Um, and all I, you know, I just kept saying, I, I don't remember anything that happened. I don't remember anything that happened. Like, please, I got finals. Please, can I get back to school? He was like, you don't remember anything that happened. You don't remember any fucking thing that happened. He's like talking to me. He was like, if you were a hoe, you should have told me you were a hoe. It was like all these weird conversations that he was having. He's definitely done this before. Oh, that wasn't his first time. And at the he he knows how to like erase someone's memory, memory. or something. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it's wild. But he. You know, he could have killed me if he wanted to. Right. He really could have. Right. But whatever reason he didn't, right. I mean, my life Thank obviously you, has purpose. Of course. Um, but eventually he ended up making, like, forcing his stuff down my throat. And then was like, oh, that you're welcome. Yeah. It was it was a mess. And and this is after he's saying, uh, you don't remember anything, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and acting like that? he saved my life and all these things. Um, and then he was like, okay, well, I'll, let's go up to the apartment um, to, give, to give you a shower. And I was like, I am not going in his house. And I was like, no, please. I really, like, I can't. I got finals. Like, please just let me go home. Like, I can't miss my finals. And I'm just, like, trying to say all these things that I can say to him for him to let me. I don't want to go there. Yeah, you know, you, that's the last place because I probably wouldn't have made it out of there. Um, and eventually he was just like, all right. And then he ended up driving. He ended up dropping himself off at a Greyhound station, um, not too far from the AUC center. And I got in the car. It's like, so he hopped out of your car. He mm-hmm. drove your car to that place, mm-hmm. hopped out, hopped out and, and he took, like, his stuff. He took my number. 
And he was like, I'll be checking on you. And I and then I ended up finding out he took my everything out of my wallet. Girl, it was it was really that type of um, situation that you hear about. But right. you're just like, really? That really happened? Right. It almost, it's just it's like, like TV. what? It yeah. sounds like a movie. Yeah, it really was wild. But you can't make this shit up. You can't make it you up. You can't make this shit you cannot, up. And you don't want to make nothing no, up like that. No, and that's why I'm yourself. just like, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, not about like, yourself. For movies, you can't make this shit up. Yeah, that's no. what I'm saying. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Like. Facts. That match, oh man. Yeah, and so I got in my driver's seat um, as slowly as I could, and um, I was staying with my best friend Kim at the time at her dorm in Spelman because we were, something was happening with Bumstead, and um, I went back to her dorm. So you drove your car back there? I drove there. Oh my yeah. God. I, I, yeah. Girl, your strength? I don't know. Unmatched. And I just literally I went to the dorm, and I was thinking Kim wasn't going to be there because she had class. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I can go, I could just take a shower, I can just tell somebody, you know, I got into a fight or something because I just was like, what just happened yeah, to me? Who's going to yeah. believe? Right. It like, was, it was just, you know, it was so like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Um, and then when I got to her dorm, I opened the door and she was there. And she was like, Brianna, what happened to you? Like, I mean, obviously just right. kind of just seeing me. She's like, what the hell happened to you? And I was like, I just want to get in the shower. I just want to get in the shower. Just and she ended up putting two and two together. And I was like, nope, we're going to the doctor. And she drove me, and I was like, please don't tell my mom. Mm. Like, I just didn't want anyone yeah, to know. Yeah, and I didn't of want, course. Yeah, you yeah. know, I was like, don't tell my mom. And, of course, it was the first person she called. My mom was on the first plane smoking. So we did a rape kit. Um, detectives came, and, you know, we did that whole process. That process is traumatic, too. So In itself. Yeah, so people who have experienced re- sexual assault, yeah. you know, know that you're not alone in that aspect of... Dealing with the police, you know, Um, because they're not very, they don't have a lot of bedside manner. They're not very compassionate. They just want to know the facts, get to the point, and that's it, you know. But there are such advocates and things like that, programs and stuff. If anyone does get in the situation, hopefully not. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are advocates that can't come and support you. And Yeah, I didn't know about any of that at the time. Um, but the nurses were very compassionate and Thank God. very loving and yeah. all that. Because um, I, I can imagine that whole process, like you're having to be asked the same questions, questions over, over and over and over. And over. You have to repeat yourself. And, and then like, if you don't say something that you said another, another person, then they're like, yeah, like, like what you about said this, this one time. Oh, and it's just 100%. like, dude, I, look at me. Yeah, You yeah, feel me? Facts. I can't imagine yeah. that, Brianna. Yeah, it was, it was traumatic. That was, you know, another traumatic part on top, on of, top of that. Yeah, and I didn't want to say anything. Right, right. <laughs> you know, honestly. I mean, right. I think it's a lot of people who are raped don't initially want to say anything because it's the shock. It's the who's going to believe me? Who am I going to tell? What does this mean to my life? Right. What did I do right. wrong? You know, it's And for all a lot these... of women, I hear the, the feelings of shame and shame, guilt that yeah. you put on yourself oh, yeah. when like, it's not I, your fault. Yeah, like why would I let him show me where to park? Why, oh. why did I trust him? Right. To do so those are a lot of questions that right. I had. Um, and you know, I finished school that semester. I don't know how I did that. My mom stayed with me for you, a few weeks. Wow. Heal, once I healed and stuff, I finished, you know, finals, even though they kind of let And your me. mom stayed in Georgia with you the yeah, whole time? Yeah, for okay. a while, oh, yeah. God bless um, her. Yeah, for sure. And my mom was not leaving. Of course. Yeah, yeah I would not. <laughs> At all. Oh, yeah, that's man. I couldn't The strength of y'all to even stay. Yeah. And well, finish I mean, this out. Well, my mom didn't want me to. Right. But I wanted to. Yeah. And I don't know where that came from right. either. Right. You know, it was something. Because you came here for a purpose and yeah. you're going to finish, finish it. it. Yep. He's That's not going to keep you from doing what That's you needed it. to do with your life. That's it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. And, you know, and it's and it's interesting because I don't think I thought that at the time. Mm-hmm. But obviously but it that was, was how that was operating. Yeah, my Amen. ancestors was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> mm, mm, you <laughs> ain't are about not. to win this. Listen, I know? have chills right yeah. now. I have chills. Yeah, they were like, no, you ain't about to do this. I've got your back. We're yes. Gonna push through this. Yes. And we did. And of course, my mom, when I went back home for the summer, wanted me to stay in Seattle. Right. And I'm like, no, I'm going back. Mm. And that next semester was mm-hmm. really tough for me mm-hmm. because I was. Like, I ended up moving to a new building, okay. a high rise. So okay. he wanted to come get me. He had to come get me. You know oh, what I mean? He had child. to go through security, security, right, right. Up the elevator through security, you know. Um, and then, you know, I had a boyfriend. At, you know, I was trying to have a boyfriend at the time. It was just weird. And how timing. was that? Like, well, trying to date again as a college student? Because you were how old now? Uh, I was 19. Oh, so you had like this was your second second semester, semester. yeah, in the first year, yeah, yeah, Still, no, 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 it was second my year, second year, okay, yeah. sophomore year, nineteen, sophomore, yeah. very young, yeah, 
Oh yeah. my god! And I went back to school. Well, when I had a boyfriend at the when it happened, right? And I broke up with him because gotcha. I just couldn't. Of course, to leave I can't. And to this day, that motherfucker does not talk to me because he was mad. And I'm like, serious? you know, but it's better that he doesn't because right. I don't need nobody in my life. Like right. That. I mean, you that can't part. understand what I just experienced. Uh, I can't help you. Back. It's not. You're not yeah, for me at all. And so uh, to go back to dating. Yeah. Well. I don't know how, how you did. it took you me just a little moved minute. on with your life. Yeah, I really did. I kind of is I moved on. I think quickly. Mm-hmm. I don't know what clicked to me. It was like I just have to keep going yeah. in life. I can't. Whatever it yeah. wasn't the. I don't think it was the best decision for me. You know, looking, looking back. back. Okay. Um, but you know, and then I kind of like stopped dealing with my friends a lot because mm. I always felt like misery loves company, mm. and you know, I started drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I started, you know, like mm-hmm. I would drink to go to sleep. I couldn't sleep at night. Oh, I had like nightmares. I was fearful all the time, even though I was trying to be normal yeah. and go out, but I was scared. Of I'm course. like, I don't know if I'm going to see him again. Oh, but man. I just went with, roll with the punches, right. you know? Um, even in all the fear that I had and all the anxiety and that's where the drinking came from, you know? Right. It's like I didn't feel scared, you know, you feel mighty and right. you can just bypass right. things or whatever. Um, yeah, but I graduated. They and found th- him. Your school, did Did you have to let your school know? Well, yeah. Did you, you have to, like, that's a whole was there any support? Um, yeah, they gave, you know, um, I had therapy. Okay. Um, I didn't really latch on to the therapist. Like, you know how some you, people feel really comfortable okay. with their therapist and things like that. I just didn't feel... Um, they understood me. They listened. They were just there to listen. And ask questions. Right. And I was tired of talking. Right. <laughs> you know, I was tired of telling the story all the time. Right. Gotcha. It always being a reason why I'm not having a good day. And I'm like, there's so many other things. I'm trying gotcha. to get this student loan. Gotcha. To, to right. Pay there's so many other things. Yeah, that, so many you know, other things golly, happening in I get this it. life outside of me being right. I get you know? that. Um, so I just stopped going. Got it. And I started, you know, just kind of dabbling in the wrong things gotcha. of healing. To, to self-heal. To self-heal, yeah. yeah. Um, self-medicate, really. Tell, mm, and, self-medicate. Um, yeah, but I got through college. I finished, and um, then they found him, like, literally a few months later. They found, yeah, they found him by DNA. That's after you graduated. Mm-hmm. It was, like, right before wow. graduation. Um, and they found him in Miami. He was in jail. Wow. Um, they found him by my rape kid DNA. What? So... so how? Because had he done it again or no, something? No, because so what happened? He was in jail for something. Okay. Um, and so before he left, they did this because they did a mouse swap. Of course. And they ran into this and oh, matched my DNA. Oh, my, my God. Kit. Perfect. Or it, wrapped my, it matched right. my rape kit. Oh, my um, God. And it was crazy because the detective called me that day. And he was like, the detective Richards was his name. He called, he called me. He was like, hey, like come up and do another um, um, identify. What do you call those things? You have to identify... The like when you have to, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I know what you're talking what about. Called. Yeah, in the movie, in the movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. They you line them go up. And do the line. Okay. Yeah, the lineup, but it was like on paper lineup. <laughs> okay. Um, and I went in, and he was the only person I've ever picked out of all the lineups that they ever showed me, and because I remember yeah. everything about him. It was you vivid. Know? Yeah, mm-hmm. very vivid. Um, and I picked him, and he was like, "Well, we found him today." He's in jail. He's been extradited to um, Atlanta. And I ended up getting a lawyer. Her name was Joe Hollander. She was a B. She was from New York. She was a short little Jewish lady. Yes. She was like, he's going to go to jail for the prisons. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. The trial kept, like, I didn't realize um, that during the trial that, uh, or during the process before a trial, the, the defendants have a right to say when and when they're not ready. Mm. And Joe Hollander was always ready. Mm. <laughs> you know, once she got all the facts down, right. we read. We like really went to the space that I was raped in. I told her detail with detail. Wow. She was very graphic mm. in how she wanted to, to hear my story. Right. And after she was like, let's go. I'm ready. Right. He was never ready. Eventually, Joe mm. got transferred to homicide. I ended up having a brand new lawyer. And guess what? He was ready. So we had to go to trial. What? Um, like two to three days after. What? Mm-hmm. So when he was ready, then, then we... Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a wild system. The um, system. Yeah, it's a wild one. And I still don't really understand what that process right. is or how it works or how it makes sense to the the victim. Right. You know, um, really not the victim, the survivor. Right. Um, but yeah, we had to go to trial. And, you know, we went and we did everything again. Yeah. Blah, 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 Had blah. to do it over. She was a lawyer. She never lost the case. Okay. Um, 
you know. So I was like, okay, this is in the bag. He was found by DNA. Right. It's a match. Test- How could he not? Yeah. Be I testified. Tested. I had to see his ass staring at me and no being way. like kind of smirkish. He was just a fucking douchebag. Disgusting. Yeah, he was really disgusting. But disgusting. his lawyer, I would say his public defender was um, a beast. Mm. She was very aggressive with me. Oh, she. Stand. Oh, she. Yeah, she mm. was very aggressive with me on the stand. She was like, if, you know, uh, who was the guy who raped you? Come walk up to him. And I literally went and pointed. Right. And she was like, Oh, if he raped you and you were so scared, how can you walk up to him? Wow. Yeah, it was like little stuff to wow. trigger me. So I was really, yeah, I was really getting mad. Like I was upset on the, of sti- on the stand. Of course. And then the lawyer you know, was like, A woman, Ooh. I'm so sorry. A yeah. woman that is on that side defending a man, like, I, I can't. That's their job. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, their it's their job. And I'm glad you're good at it, but. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm not- like, sell out. As a woman, do you not understand that pain? Mm hmm. And then a to sit there and then berate me. Yeah, a lot of a lot of women don't. You know, a lot of people yeah, are not true, empathetic. True, 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 true. Women are not. Yeah. yeah, not everyone's empathetic. That's and true. And sometimes when you're a lawyer, you're not that empathetic. That's you know, true. That's you just, have to. You you're have here to, for the yeah. for the job. Let me let me do what I need to do. Right. And unfortunately, um, but yeah. And so I was getting mad. I remember my lawyer was like, you know, try to cry. You know, almost telling me to cry. Right. Much, but I've done enough fucking. Crying. You were mad. I was mad to even right. see him. Right. To, like the little smirk that he had on his face. Like he had these glasses on. Like he was intelligent. It was just seeing his parents out there. Like I was. Oh my on, god. Yeah, I was like on fire. You know, to even experience that whole thing and be on a stand and have to like answer all these questions that are being like, it was my fault. Wow. You know, like, what were you wearing? Did you like it rough? Like, do you normally like do some wild? What? Ones? Yes. They weird. asked all of those questions. Yeah, they asked some wild no. questions, and you know, and it 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 just made me angry. You know, so I did kind of. They were, I guess, the whole angry black girl. But yeah, I am angry. Oh my you know, god! And, and you right have to, every, right every right to be to angry. angry. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? Excuse yeah. my language. No, no, fucking is a good word for it. I am. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then anyways, after the trial, they, the jury went and, um, they came back with a non-guilty verdict of rape, kidnapping, theft by force. Non-guilty for all three. All three. On basis of what? Who knows? They, did they, how did they defend that? Or how did they come to that decision? And he was a black man. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised. Yeah. Black man, black woman, all white jurors. Wow. Wow. There was a like a person maybe. Two I need a I needed a black woman to be on that jury. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Who 100%. can really relate to me? Yeah. And that that whole system. First of all, our system is just so janky. very janky. Yeah. So just not yeah. correct, inept. And mm-hmm. if you're gonna be, if someone is being tried, I need I need people of all uh, colors, yeah. all backgrounds, all socioeconomic statuses to be on yeah. that jury. It doesn't work like that. And that's crazy that it doesn't. Yeah, there was actually just a guy, a, a judge, a black judge, that was turning away jurors because he was like, you know, like, we are not doing this trial unless there's someone fit Good. that can relate to Good. this person. Yeah, and I was like, and they were giving him, it was all on the internet after the Senate. Yeah. Um, and they were giving him all type of backlash. Is this legal for him to do that? But was it legal right. to have someone on there that right. totally doesn't even understand you, doesn't sympathize with you, none of that? Um, doesn't understand your background, your culture, like nothing. So, you know, when I, all I remember doing is when I walked past him, I was like, hopefully you're not next or your kids are not next. Wow. And I just left. And Good. I, and I literally moved from Atlanta in three days. Did you say something to them? That's, That's what, what you said? said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I literally left Atlanta in three days. I left my apartment. I left my car. Because, you know, he getting out. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I, the last thing I need him to do is come finish what he thought he, yeah. you know, like what he started. Right. Um, and so I moved to New York. That's insane. Yeah. That is so yeah. insane. And to have gone through all of that just for it to be yeah. not. Yeah. I, I just, uh, before we move on, I'm just, I just can't wrap my head around all of these facts being presented and then them still... It seems like, especially when it comes to rape and cases like this of assault on women, um, people don't take it seriously. seriously. Yeah, it's a it's a thing. It's like it's very a societal thing. It where is things happen to women. It's like oh, okay, it, you'll be okay. It, yeah. Especially when it comes to sexual assault, so, they don't take it seriously, it and it's a very that's when you see the patriarchy mm-hmm. in our society and how they just don't take women 
Um, seriously. Seriously, yeah. Especially like, when it comes how? to sex. It's like yeah. we're like already as objects. And black women were already looked at already. as sexual. or looked at as objects. I was too, you know, it could have been the idea I was too young to be at out that late. You know, like who Every knows what Every reason up and down. down. Why but I not. <laughs> but right, yeah. but not just just sympathizing but, with the fact that I was, and you should believe, believe me. me. Yeah, a hundred percent. And yet, and these men, it? there are so many men who are out here, yeah. just walking free. free yeah. That shit pisses there's, there's, me yeah, off. Yeah, no, it pisses me off too. And I mean, it's really, um, it's really hurtful to right. to uh, to feel unheard. Right. You know, um, right. To feel not believed. So it's like, did that now? Now it really was questions when I moved to New York. Like what? What did I do to make that situation happen? Was it really my fault? Mm. You know, it's all then these you, questions. Listen, in every con- in every situation, like even when you break up with somebody or mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's a breakup. Yeah. Women tend to always, always internalize. internalize yeah. What did I do wrong? wrong. Yeah. Was it me? me. Yeah. Could I have done this better? Yeah. Oh my god, maybe I wasn't this enough. Yeah. I wasn't affectionate enough. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. womanly yeah. enough. Yeah. I wasn't open enough. It's always us yes. not being enough no. yeah. for something. Yeah, or, we are more than enough. We are more than yeah. enough, and it's not us. Yeah. Trust and believe, ladies. If somebody doesn't want to be with you, if if that's the case, yeah. for example. They just don't want to be with you, period. For whatever that reason is. Yeah. But it has nothing to do with you, you and all to do with them. Yeah. yeah. By all means, yes, we all have things that we can work on for sure. 100%. But at the end of the day, my point is like, because I've gone through situations where I'm over here looking at myself like, mm, what could I have done? Yeah. I sh- it was because of me. Uh, yeah. And making it about yeah. us and internalizing. And then when you internalize is when you then start to have low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. You start thinking about yourself so differently. differently. Then yeah. you don't have the confidence. Now yes. you're moving in the world, world. like this yeah. broken and people, person. And people see you like that. Yeah. And people respond to you as you see yourself. Oh. And so it's really important that when you... Look in the mirror, and I actually started this thing called the mirror effect. Uh, mm. I was just saying there is a mirror effect because I remember um, looking in the mirror at times and just completely breaking down. Like, who is this woman? Wow. Like, what does she want from this world? Like, how is she? And especially when I was in New York, because right. I was, you know, I went there my first year, kind of a mess. Right. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was kind of thrown. You know, I was you kind decided of to just go to New York. Yeah, was I it to a, model or or just no, to go? No, so I came. I went, came to LA first. Okay. Uh, for like oh. a few months because my friend was here, but okay. I knew the one thing I wasn't going back to Seattle. Gotcha. And I wasn't staying in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, sure. so where am I going to go? I had a friend in California here in LA, and I came for a few months, and then I started. I got an agency here randomly, okay. and then I started doing commercials. And I finally got my SAG card, and I was like, "Oh, let me." You Did know, you always I, want to model, no, or you no, I just fell be, into it while you were here? Yeah, I wanted to be a PR agent. Right, uh, I wanted you, to be. I want to represent for, right. us. Wow. <laughs> you know, um, and yeah, God had other plans, and so when I moved, yes. when I came to LA to visit them, just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And, you know, they were my guy friends, so they were, like, super protective yes. and, like, yes. watching over me and stuff. And then I had a girlfriend who was um, in New York. Mm-hmm. She was like, you should just come here. Yeah. She was working with Diddy. She right. was Diddy chef at the time. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so I went there, stayed with her for a little while. I got weird. Um, <laughs> and then... <laughs> and you said it got weird? Yeah. I mean, you know how some friendships yeah. are, are not um, always... Good. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. So, whatever. Um, and I ended up getting the agency in New York and finally sorting my life out. Yes. Um, a little bit after the first year, but the first right. year I was like just diving figuring it out. The, yeah, yeah, and diving, drinking more too mm, because mm. I was just so messed up by that trial. Right. Of course. Um, but yeah, I figured out we started going to therapy again in New York, Amen. and um, yeah, when I went to therapy, it was the same thing for me. Mm. Like. I woke up one day, I was rushing, I woke up late, I was rushing, you know, New York train, I missed the train, and then, like, had to get to the office, I was a little bit late, and it's not my first time being late, so I was really trying to be on time this day, and it (laughs) didn't happen, (laughs) so, (laughs) you know how we be, (laughs) CP, CP team. Uh, (laughs) We're we're getting better. Yeah, we're getting better, we're growing up, we're growing up over here. (sighs) Have patience, (laughs) at least try (laughs) Um, yeah, and I went there, and she was like, how was your day? And I'm just like, oh, like, I'm having just not a fucking good day. Yeah. You know, and I literally said that, and she was like, oh, you know, we'll rape sometimes, we'll make it. And I was like, it's not I, that. I literally said to her, I said, it has fucking nothing to do with my rape. 
quit saying that every time I'm not having a fucking good day, it right. has to surface around one particular thing that happened to my life. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, I called my mom after I left, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm done with the therapy mm-hmm. shit. Like, I want to feel like I survived the mm-hmm. situation, Amen. that I be empowered by me making moves Thank and still you. growing and still doing stuff and still trusting myself with this life. You know, like, I want to feel empowered. Yes. Like, I'm really fucking tired. Do you feel like they were victim, re-victimizing feel, you? Yeah, like, I feel victimized. Yeah. Oh, like, it's just like this whole cycle of, like, oh, because you were raped. It's almost like mm. they didn't want me to leave. Right. They wanted me to stay, stay there. Stay in that. Yeah. That's so interesting. I, I want like you to expand on that. I feel like that is so interesting because I feel like, yeah, a lot of therapists, you know, they're doing their job. They're, they're human beings yes. with their own troubles and they need therapists too, Visit, right? Yeah. And um, you, it's therapist almost like, a you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost like you're giving them something to latch onto where they can say, okay, good, okay, I have something a here. permanent client. You, you feel, exactly. I don't be a permanent client. That is it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I have something to latch onto. Yes. If anything, oh, it's because of this. Yes. Oh, it's because it's of this. Yeah. And it's just not like, all therapists are like not that, all. but mine work. Not all, but <laughs> it's almost like, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Give me, like, let me. Empower. Me. Yeah, let me feel like I did something great post what has happened to me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and my mom was like, you know, well, whatever you decide to do, um, you have to live as a survivor and you have to start doing something to mm-hmm. heal. Like, you have to yeah. cut back on a lot of, yeah. you know, damaging things that you're doing to self-medicate or safe, safe you know, mm-hmm. s- you know, mm-hmm. uh, all the drinking and stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> that I was doing <laughs> into a lot of... Mm-hmm. Um, and really st- find yourself and yes. start centering yourself and being better for yourself because yes. that's the only way that you're going to look like a survivor yes. you know because when you're drowning your sorrows and that's very victim mentality mm. you know mm. um, so snap out of that and get in the survivor mode so I started mm. you know yeah, doing thanks mom yeah I know my wow. mom she, she heard things she's going to give it to you real yes um, yeah and so I started doing yoga I started you know um uh, going to church a little bit more, yes. doing a little bit more prayer, yes. and really centering myself and grounding myself in a way that um, I felt like I became, like, this woman. And yes. then I started meeting, you know, all these how, other How old was that around? Uh, 20, about 24. Okay, okay, that's that's young. Yeah, about 24-ish. And, um, yeah, so I felt like I was starting to become, like, this woman. Good. And, um. Yeah, you know, I started meeting all these other people who are survived and all that. So I started having these like dinners. We'll have dinners together. Oh, beautiful. And we'll have champagne nights. We'll have movie nights. I and love we'll it. do stuff like that just to kind of see where we are in our yeah. healing journey, what yeah. we needed from each other, how we can support each other, um, what programs we may be doing. Yes. What, you know, what's just, helping. What's, yeah, just yeah. really connecting with each other as survivors yeah. and really just. Like trying to love on each other and saying we can get through this, we got this, we don't have to live in this, you Amen. know. And so then I started my nonprofit. Yeah, it's, I'm like, is that where voices yeah. beyond? Yeah, it came, came in my mind, like yeah. what I wanted to do. I knew nothing about nonprofit organizations right. at all, right. so I didn't do it while I was in New York. Mm-hmm. And once I came in, tell I actually started you did it. it. But That's you know, I really felt like it was more empowering for me yes. to find my own alternative ways of healing versus sitting in front of somebody. Listening mm-hmm. to my story and not listening to it in a sense of um, survival. Mm-hmm. Like listening to How it can in we a move sense past of like, it? Yeah, listening to it in a sense of, oh, you know, oh, you know, like yeah. that's how I felt. Yeah. But, you know, I, I do believe you didn't in want, therapy. Is it that you didn't want the sympathy? You wanted the, like, how do we move past Passes, it? Yeah, okay. exactly. I don't want any sympathy. Gotcha. You know, like right. I, I feel like that doesn't serve anyone. Right. You know? At that like, point oh, in your life, you're like, I want to move, move on. on. Help me yeah. move on. 100%. Not like, oh my God. God yeah. 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 I don't I want, that. I don't want none of that. I get that. Um, yeah. And so I stayed in New York for what, five and a half years. Mm-hmm. And I was coming back and forth here mm-hmm. to LA to and work working. too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I got tired, real tired of New York real quick mm-hmm. because the rain, I mean, the snow, the, the winters. The snow is, oh, is brutal. It's the so winters, crazy. Oof, yeah. Chad. And when I came back the, the And you did five time, years there? Yeah. No, That's six, amazing. No, five, six years there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, you thugged it out. That's I good. Did, I did thug it out. That's I good. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Seasonal depression is real. Free. Yeah, it can be. A hundred percent. And I need um, the sunshine. Yeah. And then I went back and. And it was like two snowstorms, and I was like, I'm out. Okay. I can't do this. And then you finally moved to yeah, LA. Yeah, I finally got my grounds here. Good. And yeah. Um, started started working. working again and started, you know, and I really, LA was one of those places, like, even if I did have a bad day, mm-hmm. 
I would get up. I would drive to the beach. Yes. I would get up and just be like, wow, God, this is beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, this yes. is beautiful. The sun is out. The sun is hitting my skin in waves. And it feels... You know, the oh, palm tree. It's healing. It is It healing. really is. Yeah, that vitamin to be D nature, is serious. To be in nature, <laughs> see the sun. Yeah. Like, it really is healing. I remember when, um, obviously, when COVID hit and, and like, I was like, I'm so glad I'm not in New York right now because yeah. I was supposed to go to London and be there for a few months and then go oh, to New wow. York. Right? Thank God yeah. I didn't leave. Yes. Because uh, March is right when they were like, everything's closing down. You need to stay home. And we, I thought it was going to be like for a few weeks. Few, yeah. We're nine, nine months, months in. Girl, it's about to be the, the quarantine anniversary. Yeah. In, in three months. In, in three months. So yeah. we're nine months in. And I'm just like, thank God I wasn't over there. Because I would have been stuck. stuck yeah. And man, yeah, like, weather, I'm so glad we were on this coast yeah, when it happened. Because yeah. you did have those moments of like, oh my God, we get to at least go um, in nature, nature and recenter yeah. yourself and come back. Like, it wasn't too much of that cabin fever. Because yeah. uh, in New York, I had girlfriends. It's the dead of it's winter, winter yeah. February, yeah. you know, March, still cold. cold freezing. By themselves, <laughs> you yeah. know, single girls. You can't, literally, you're on top of each other. Yeah. You're yeah. living in a building. Top in order each other and yeah. surrounded by, by people. people. And in order to, literally, and yeah. in order to even just go to get groceries, you have to get on the metro mm-hmm. and like every, you know, like at the time COVID, yeah. it still is very contagious, but like yeah, it was yeah. scary. We didn't know what, what it is, was. Yeah, we still don't. Yeah, we real. still don't. So yeah, <laughs> all that to say, I'm, I was so glad to be on this side. Yeah. So I'm, I can imagine like. Yeah, it was a very, it's like a, a the serenity. healing. For yeah, me, you know, like I really feel like I can step outside no matter what day I'm having. Exactly. And be like, okay, Brianna, like this is what God Look has at this. for you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Go to the beach. Like, yeah. Go for a hike. Yeah. Like, go for a run. You know, and you can do these things. Um, and you know, New York just didn't have the access to a beach. Right. Yeah, far Rockaway oh. Beach or Coney Island. <laughs> Them brown beaches. <laughs> Them brown beaches. <laughs> uh, yeah. But. So what were some other modalities of healing for you that like that obviously need nature? You said yoga. Yeah. What yoga. other things did you do to heal yourself? Yeah. Um, I did a, well, I started with yoga. I did meditation. I started um, really doing stuff where I started falling in love with my body again, too. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's very interesting to have someone completely snatch that from you right violate and, yeah, you yeah violate you like that like there's this part of not feeling sexy or not mm. feeling like worthy and all that stuff mm. so i started or comfortable in your skin mm-hmm. so i started doing like little pole dancing classes i love it and stuff. i saw yeah and i, I did love been it. doing boxing training um and stuff so you know and then you know and, and it's empowering as it hell. is empowering. i love I mean, it i traveled a lot too when i was in new york mm-hmm. so that kind of took me my mind away from stuff love i lived it. in cape town for a year and a yes. half I travel a lot with my boyfriend who played yeah. basketball. Yeah. So traveling for me is very therapeutic. Yes, it is. <laughs> it yes, really it is. is. So um, all of those encompass. And, you know, I think travel is very important because yes. you get to escape from. Yes. Not really escape because you don't really want to escape from situations. Right. But you get to just be in another place. And you just see how big the world is. The, and like mm-hmm. out of all the things that has happened to you, you're here. You're here. You know, yeah. um, you're somewhere else around the world. You get mm-hmm. to experience other cultures mm-hmm. and life and mm-hmm. meet new people and eat good food. And you, you know, see how, bi- yeah, you, you see, see how, how big, big the, the world, world is. is. And yeah. look how me. Yeah. Like me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm experiencing their culture. I can go back to my culture. Like, how beautiful. People can learn from me. I can learn from people. Exactly. And And that's another thing is, like, when you go, too, you see how, even though, you know, our lives aren't perfect and we've been through craziness, it's it's like, if I were to put my problems, if we were all to put our problems in a bucket, I'll I'll take mine back. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take mine back. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the world is, is... there's a lot, a lot going on in There's this a world. Lot, yeah. And you know what I learned too? It's like um, when I was traveling, I learned how many other people experienced the yeah. same thing I experienced. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't alone in that mm-hmm. either. And it's happening mm-hmm. everywhere around the world. Yeah. Um, and to like, there's a lot of people I used to speak at schools yes. in Cape Town. And I did a lot of speaking at, well, you know, in other countries that I yes. was in just to, for young girls, to, like love the skin that they're in. That's beautiful. Know their body. Yes. You know, someone told you here, here, here to kids, you know, like, oh no, dear. Like those not good spots. Right. You right. Know? Right, right. Um, so that was very fulfilling for me too, Beautiful. like being able to share my story yeah. um, and empower those who are maybe silent. Mm-hmm. Um, so Gee. that was very beneficial for me too. Like you was, found purpose in yes, your story. Def, yeah. How beautiful my, is that? My, yeah. There's a testimony. 100%. It, it's 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, 1000%. You know, I think God 
you know, I'm not saying what happened to me was, you know, <laughs> you no. know, was something that I deserved. No. But I really feel that, you know, they always say God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. I don't know why he think I'm so strong. Listen, because you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because sometimes and, I'm like, uh, can I really for And he gives his, tu- his toughest challenges to those who he know he can trust. trust yeah. And, and when oh. I think about that. Wait, hold on. Can you run that back? Listen, chill. Yeah, can you run he that back? He gives his toughest challenges to those he know he can trust. Wow. And yeah. that is a badge of honor that mm-hmm. you should wear. And I'm getting chills saying this. That yeah. is a badge of honor that you should wear knowing that um, obviously the things that you went through should never have happened to you. Right. No one should go through those things. But um, sadly, it was a way, weirdly, of also ushering you, pushing you into your purpose, purpose. work 100%. as far as affecting the lives of young women yep. who uh, needed to hear it from my someone. purpose work, 100%. You know? Yeah, I mean, it really, um, when I just started meeting all the people that I was happened to, and a lot of these women had, a lot of these women and men mm-hmm. had not told anyone their story. Mm-hmm. And I would be the first one that they told. Mm-hmm. Like, I would speak wow. at schools. Like, when I spoke at Berkeley, this 65-year-old woman came up to me and said she never told anyone her story wow. when she was raped. And wow. how my story inspired her to start, you know, just to at least tell me to feel some relief, yes. you know? Um, yes. And that type of stuff, for me, is it's healing yes. in a way, yes. you know what I mean? Cause I'm like, okay, like yeah. I'm doing something, I'm turning my, tr- my trauma into healing. You know what I mean? And I think it's breaking gen- gen- generational curses too, you know, because just as trauma Snaps. can go down. Yes. Yeah. So can healing. And yes. I want for my kids and you know, people in my family and people that are surrounded by me to understand that healing is, healing looks good on you. Yes. You know oh, what I mean? Healing looks good <laughs> on, on you. you. Yeah, okay. It does. I'm going to have to give you my, one of my sweaters. Um, yes, so please. Sweaters. Tell us about VBA, Voices Beyond Assault. Uh, so Voices Beyond Assault is More. a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Yes. Um, we're dedicated in providing, you know, aid, resources, and alternative therapy to survivors of sexual abuse. Um, we really want to empower survivors to speak their stories, share their, you know, know that their voice has power, um, know that healing is beautiful. Yes. Um, because there's beauty in your survival. Yes. You know, and I really want to just keep uh, survivors of sexual trauma or sexual violence to be empowered mm-hmm. by their, you know, pushing through life, you mm-hmm. know, because we don't get enough credit for the things that we continue to do despite what we've experienced, mm-hmm. you know, um, and especially mm-hmm. with women too, it's, it's a whole nother thing. We always putting on this brave face and this, this face of like, we got this, we're strong, you know, we just continue to do all these things despite, you know, a lot of stuff that we're going through, you yeah. know, yep. um, and we deserve applause yes. <laughs> you know what? we really do more um, than applause yeah okay and we deserve to to also give that applause to ourselves, to ourselves. too you know because a lot of times you know we're looking for the applause in the audience but if you don't really have mm. that happiness internally mm. or that that internal clap you mm. know for yourself then you're really losing missing out on something really beautiful I love that. You literally touched me because uh, recently, like, that's been my thing, like, always looking externally. Mm-hmm. But you have to just see that within, within yourself. yourself. Yeah. And yeah. then the world sees you so differently, too. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting once you really start loving yourself yes. in a way and um, presenting yourself in a way the world just, like, stands up for you. Yes. Like, you know, like, yes. you, you create, you demand a different type of approach from mm. the world, you know? Stand up for yourself so, yeah. and the world will stand up for, for you. you. Yep. A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. And I, um, you know, it took me a while to learn it, yes. <laughs> you know, but, but you're I so confident now. You're so beautiful. You, and like you, nice you radiate love. You radiate I, just, just light. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I really like, I really, uh, love life. Yes. You know, Amen. I really feel like it is such a blessing to be on this earth and yeah. to experience We're grateful to be people, here. People, you know, and like just even with our relationship, it's like we can not see each other for months, you know, but then we see each other, it's like nothing happened, you know, nothing yes, happened. No time passed. Yeah, but I've been blessed to meet so many wonderful people in my journey, especially when I started loving myself mm. more. You know, I started meeting people mm-hmm. that Who look like that. love to me. Amen. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, um, and as you want those type of people yeah. around you. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> there ain't you no vibrate other higher, people. and you attract trash. that. Yep. And to you, you. Yep, and you trash everything that doesn't vibrate there. I you love know? that. Um, you know, we just, and especially as like just black women too. I feel like we owe it to ourselves to understand that like we are, we have been through so much, um, 
but we still put this face on of happiness and there's still this regalness and presence about mm -hmm, us and mm -hmm. um we just can't lose sight of even like the things that you know even i was saying i was so vulnerable when i was raped and all that stuff um you still can't lose sight of those little vulnerabilities and those ways that you were mm. um you can't lose that of yourself like your vulnerability mm -hmm. your um just a glow that you had before trauma hits, right, you know, right. like you don't want to lose that. Um, so you have to find it. You have to find it again. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. It's, and it's work to find it, yeah, but it is so rewarding. It is. It is. And it's just, again, beauty in your survival. And it's not always your survival of rape or something. Right. It's your survival of anything, losing your father, not having your father, you know, uh, not having your mother or seeing witness life. something. Yeah, surviving, surviving this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hello, twenty twenty. There's beauty in it. We're There's getting, beauty yeah, in it. There's beauty for in sure. It. Um, you know, and I literally, my dad. Uh, I just lost my dad last year, mm. um, and I had a aha moment because I, me and my dad never really spent more than twenty four hours together since I was like a little girl. Wow. Um, and when he found out that he had cancer, mm -hmm. um, and he had a year to live, mm -hmm. I'm like, I really want to share with him wow. everything that I felt about him not being a part of my life. Yeah. And saying it without any cushion on mm. it because I always had cushion okay. on it. Okay. Like so you I was just looking, let him have it. Well, yeah, because, you know, normally when I see him, I know it was a very minimal time, so I wanted to just keep yeah. it happy and, yeah. you know, fluffy and fun and just to experiment, you know, mm -hmm. learn him a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, but that sometimes doesn't serve you either because you're still hiding. You're all holding the, Holding in. so much stuff in. And so when he found out he had cancer, I flew him up here. Wow. And, you know, he, or he's, you know, he's in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and that was the whole thing to mm -hmm. get him on the plane because oh <laughs> he is a piece of work. Really? <laughs> <laughs> he was a piece of work. Oh my God. Um, he got up, obviously they gave him way too many drinks on the plane. So he literally had a cigarette in his mouth in a wheelchair, no. loud at the airport. No. Oh God. Picking up from LA. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dad, be quiet. Dad, Dad calm dad. down. <laughs> I can only imagine. Oh my God, it was something else. And so anyways, we get to the house and like mm -hmm. the next day, you know, um, I was asking, I was like, dad, do you feel a certain type of way not being a part of me and my sister's eyes? Mm -hmm. um, and he just looked at me and a couple minutes later, he said no. Mm. And I mean, it threw me off because mm. I just knew he was going to come back with right. something softer, right. you know? But I mean, even the first day, it's like how he talked about women. He never used women in a light. It was mm -hmm. always their, you know, bitch or whore. Like, wow. And then I had to tell him, I was like, we're going to stop that today. Right. Because you're talking to a woman. Right. And not only are you talking to a woman, but you're talking to a Your daughter. daughter. Yeah, and that ain't cute. Right. Now, women are so sensitive. That's just who my dad was. Yeah. He was a right, right. tough. Everyone, listen, yeah. parents are human beings. P you, listen. And it takes a while for us to grow up and realize, realize that. Realize that, 100%. They are, no, they are not perfect yeah, at all. They've been through their whole They've been through their life lives. Experience listen, too. before we came. Yep. Yeah. 100%. And so when he said that, I walked in the kitchen, I fixed him food, I cried. Mm. Then I brought him the food back and he looked at me and he said, you know, what I did, he said, you don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, my life wasn't all peaches right. and cream. And he said, and the one way that I knew to feel better was to get high. I didn't have to feel, mm. you know? Mm. And he said, and it went from me not wanting to feel mm. to me not really wanting to feel ever. So I had to keep up oh, with that, you man. know, keep up with that pattern of not feeling anything, you know? And that turned into serious drug problems, oh, you know? Man. And he said, it has nothing to do with you. Mm. He said, it had all to do with me. Mm. So I love that honesty. Yeah. And then we got into this conversation of like, you know, um, you know, I, I was, I was, really proud of myself because I was able to tell him I forgive him. I always mm -hmm. tell him that I forgive him, but yeah. it was like very blow over but cookie cutter. Felt it. But yeah, and I just told him like, this is how I felt about you not being here in our lives. You know, all my, my rape and mm -hmm. things that I experienced in my life. It would have been great to have a fucking dad. Mm -hmm. You know, it would have been great to have a dad there yeah. and someone to support me and right. care about me because I did feel unwanted. I right. didn't know why you didn't want to be able to. Right. I didn't understand what drugs was growing up. Thank God I grew up to understand what right. that was. But as a child, you don't know what that's like. You know, or you don't even know what the hell that means. Like, oh, he's, you know, he's sick. What kind of sickness right. will make him not want to be a part right. of, you know, like, I can help him, right. you know? Mm. And so there was Thank very honest conversation that I had, and he didn't like a lot of things that I had to say, of but course. I, didn't, I didn't care. Good. You know, I had, to, had get to get that get off out. of me. And I said, but at the end of the day, I forgive you mm -hmm. because I, you know, parents are people too, you mm -hmm. know, and I mm -hmm. understand that, uh, you know, 
I don't know what you've been through, what dra- what traumas you haven't dealt with either that trickled into you not understanding how to raise a child, you know, or how to be there, just mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's power and forgiveness, you mm-hmm. know, like I, with the guy who raped me, I forgive him mm-hmm. too, you know, mm-hmm. um, that took a lot, of but course. you know, I have to, yeah. in order for you, and it's not for anybody else, it's for yourself. But you, yes. Because it's only eating at you to is. hold on to that pain, pain, to hold on to that resentment, that anger. A hundred percent. You know, 100%. it eats, literally eats away at us and our, our souls. Yeah. It's like a cancer. It, you know, literally. It's like the things that you just don't take care of, yeah. you know, like it just festers in your yeah. body and it eventually it, will it can come manifest out. into disease, disease too, yeah. because if you're literally always, you know, still in that pain and that trauma, it really can manifest itself uh, physically where you're experiencing so much stress that you can develop a damn, you know, tumor, ulcers, you can, de- you can yeah. develop ulcers, Cancer. you can develop so many things yeah. that are based on stress because your body is not free flowing. flowing. It's not moving yeah. the yeah. way it needs to because there's so, so much concentrated blockers. energy yeah. Yeah. blocked. Yep. A hundred percent. So, you know, it's, you know, there's a power in forgiveness. There's yes. a power in, um, you know, like finding yourself again. Um, if you lost yourself, you know, um, so yeah, you know, I just, I've, I've grown and I just still love people. I'm yes, still very amen. nice to people, even though, like, even some people are like, you, like, all that happened to you, you can still talk to people at night and say hi, talk to homeless people, give homeless people food, yes. you can still hug homeless people. Like, yes. yes. You know, I haven't yes. lost that part of me, thank God. You know, like, God resides in me and I feel like mm. I, I hope people see him in me, you know, yes. uh, or see her and whatever you want to yes. define it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, in me, and I just think that more, I've learned more about God because of some of the traumas and um and i won because of i found god too amen we won you won you won yeah period yeah and we're gonna keep winning keep winning in jesus name in jesus name period we ask god to continue amen to cover us amen um give us his grace his mercy and wisdom and just allow us to just blossom as he wants us to yes you know and And come here and fulfill the purpose that we came here to do yeah yes i want to say first of all thank you so much you've been amazing and just everything that you said i just want to ask one last question is what would you tell your 12 year old self oh um god i just picture myself at 12 too it's just freaking me out um God, I was so vulnerable and so sweet and so loving and like, oh God, it's almost bringing me to tears. Um, I would just say that um, just to, oh God. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I really just seen myself. That yeah. was really wild. Yeah. It, it, a lot of the things that um, has oh, been the I'm most healing. Oh. <laughs> I knew it was going to come out eventually. <laughs> It's okay. Oh, let I it thought out. I had it all together no, for a second. No, let it out. And it, it's just, I mean, I feel the spirit moving between us. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, so, I'm so blessed to have you here. Yeah. Everything that you've said has literally been tingling yeah. the whole time. I feel blessed and to be And I feel here. like there's messages being passed between us. And I always say, um, God speaks to me through people. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling that right now. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you've been saying has been sticking. And I'm yeah. like, ooh, I was supposed to hear that. Ooh, yeah. I was supposed to feel that. Yeah. And, so and I appreciate the, that. And, and that's things, where the tears come yeah. from. <laughs> a lot so of the you. things that you've been saying is the same, too. Um, my 12-year-old self, um, just love yourself. Yes. Um, just trust love yourself. Um, listen to your, you know, like, you know, Jesus. Um, and it just love just yourself that. and yeah. trust yourself and yeah. know that you are capable of all amazing things and Amen. you're worth it. Um, don't let anyone ever uh, try to define you. Mm. Um, yeah, just stay true to who you are Amen. too and don't allow any experiences to, to alter your person. Who you are. Yeah. Mm, that's it, literally. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, yes, to heal, I, I've had to imagine myself as my younger self mm-hmm. and talk to her. And, and, and the first time I did that too, I, I was bawling. Yeah. Because to see yourself. A, if someone asked me that before and it wasn't the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's very you different know? coming from you. Again, it's, it, it's, it's the space. Yes, you know? it's it the really space. Is. Yeah. And like it, to see myself, I was bawling. Yeah. That little girl who mm. didn't know anything about anything. the world. Like, and I'm just like, it, it, yeah, it gives me chills to think about it. Yeah. 
Don't make me cry. I girl. Don't, girl. <laughs> don't make me cry. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much thank you for, for everything. Me. You're beautiful. I can't keep I can't say it enough. Yes, yeah, so And you. it's not just your your physical beauty. Yeah. It's I think I'm more beautiful on the inside. You feel me? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And really that's do. the compliment that hits the most. Most, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And I'm not even talking about your outside. I'm talking about the, the inside. inside. You are beautiful. Thank you, and I thank you for your story. I thank you for everything that you're doing to help survivors mm -hmm. of sexual assault and people that are going through things. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being there. And thank you for being a light and just using your platform to now reach out to, to survivors mm -hmm. to be able to tell their stories and to be another vessel, vessel yes. to for them to fulfill their purpose Perfect. you know thank you so much for joining us on victory over circumstance and telling your story and yeah. sharing with us all that you are yeah and i appreciate it more than you know thank you i thank you for this platform it's thank so you. needed because thank you. there is always victim victory over circumstance amen you know amen. Um, despite no matter what your circumstance yes. is there is always victory there to is be always found. victory to be found no matter what you've been through your circumstances i always say are temporary, temporary. but your purpose is not Listen. so you definitely saw that your purpose oh. is beyond what just happened yeah. to you i'm going back to 100%. clark atlanta i'm gonna finish my school yeah. i'm going here i'm yeah. doing this I'm I'm not letting it stop me and it's not going to define I'm, me. me. I'm not a rape victim. victim. No, I, I went am. through it. It yeah. happened. Yeah. But I am Brianna yeah, I Michelle. You feel me? Survivor, that part. Warrior, that woman. part. Yeah. I am Brianna Michelle. <laughs> Chill, everything, everything that comes after it is what you decide. Set, yeah. Period. Yeah. And, and I love and you for I'm that. Okay Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank and you, thank yes. you, Brianna, thank you. for coming. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it so much. Love you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I hope that this the story just touched you as it did me. Um, definitely continue to listen to the next episode um, out next week on Wednesday. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching. Yeah. Comment below. And if you're listening, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe so that you know when the next episodes are coming. Thank you guys so much and see you next time. <laughs>